Remember, I imagine it's been a fairly tough nine, ten days for Ben Stokes. I was really pleased that he's having that involved. Secondly, what was your reaction when you heard the news on Tuesday? Um, well, it's good to have him back around the squad. Um, yeah, look, happy for happy for Ben, and glad that it was uh, that it was all over. Mentally, where is he at? It's obviously taking a toll on him. Is he in a position where you're confident if Celeste can play a test match? Uh, well, we'll find that over, out over the next couple of days. I haven't actually spoken to him since. I'm sure he's had plenty of phone calls. Um, so we, we've got the next two days to assess uh, where he's at, um, and we'll do that at, yeah, in the next two days. Of course, when you look at the first two test matches, Sam Curran was man of the match at Edge Baston and then Chris Works last week. Potentially, if you do recall Ben Stokes, it's just a great quite a selection guide. Well, I mean, it's a good position to be in from that point of view. Um, whether he plays or not, um, you know, we've got some guys in form in the team. Um, and it, look, it's going to be a difficult decision to make um, whoever misses out, whether it's Ben or, or whether it's someone else. Um, you know, it's, it's a position we've been trying to get into in the test team for, for, for a while. You know, um, you know the one-day team, it's, it's a difficult team to select. Um, the test team, it's been difficult for other reasons, but you know, we're starting to get yeah, some, some good young players coming into the team, uh, which makes the job of the selectors difficult. Yeah, Finally, for me on the better steps issue, the ECB have got their own disciplinary process that's now ongoing. Does that create any issues for you, or is it business as usual? Oh, no, for us and the team, it's business as usual. That's out of our hands, um, and they'll deal with that uh, accordingly. Yeah. Michael Morgan has told us that he thinks it was too hasty to bring Ben back into the squad, given what he's gone through, given the events in the last few weeks, how much he should have a break. Were you supportive of him coming back in? Were you part of that decision making, and why is it right for him to do it? Um, well, it was a collective sort of a, um, decision, you know, you know self management. Um, you know, the captain of the team, uh, Andy Flower. Um, the, the, you know, the board, everyone was sort of, yeah, had a bit of a say, Ed, Ed Smith. Um, and it was basically thought that, you know, for, for his own well-being, I think it was it was good to get him back around the cricket. But will you all have to go out of the team? Do you, do you suggest you might not? Oh, well, there's, there's nothing automatic about selections. Um, you know, we've, we'll see how, he's, uh, how he is mentally as well as physically. He hasn't played for a couple of weeks. Um, he's been a guy that in the past has been able to come in and perform... Uh, without having played a lot of cricket, um, so we'll take that in consideration. But also, if, you know, sometimes it's a little bit like when someone gets injured, someone someone else comes into the team and does well. It's a bit difficult for that injured player to come back in. Well, this is a similar similar situation. We've got a yeah, it's a difficult <coughs> difficult decision to make. The Daily Mail today said that there'll be an inquest into the entire culture around your sport. Is that the case? Is there a need for that? Do you think? And what lessons have you and your team learned Well, certainly since the Bristol incident, the uh, you know we've, we've there's a lot of work being done on team culture with the two captains, and that's and, and that'll be ongoing. Um, certainly, we've had to make you know one or two changes, obviously with curfews and that type of thing. Um, but yeah, as I said, there's on, there'll be an ongoing uh, work done on team culture and what it means to actually play for England. Um, what do you think on that issue of the curfews and the letters you look? What does it say about an England squad if you actually have to, to enforce curfews and not allow them to police themselves? Well, it's, certainly in the past, all the other teams I've been involved with, and certainly with this team when I first arrived, my philosophy is to you know, treat people like adults, and they'll they'll respond like adults. <coughs> Look, for a team that's been on, you know, he's on the road for pretty much 11 months out of 12, you know, we've had an incident which we would rather have not happened. Um, you know, and to the degree where we, we, we've thought, well, we, we do need to do something, something different. Um, and certainly since, you know, a couple of small indiscretions in, in Australia after that incident, um, you know, I think the, the players, you know, I could sit here and now and say that I think the players, they've finally woken up, you know, that there's, um, that, you know, they have learnt their lesson and their behaviour and the way they go about their professionalism, um, you know, off the field as well as on, has been top class since. And they recognise that they have a responsibility to the image of the game as a players now, do they? 
Well, look, they've, they've, always, they've always understood that there is a, um, a responsibility. Um, but, you yeah, know, they're all human beings. One or two guys have made a mistake that I'm sure, you know, they are disappointed about. Um, and they've been, you know, honest about. Um, you know, and we move on. In that context, though, you, you still don't think it's, it's too hasty to have that given the responsibility England players have to the energy of the game, the reputation. Yeah, look, look. I can understand. I can understand where people are coming from when they argue the, the opposite. Um, you know, a couple of things. I suppose. I mean, he's already missed a number of a, a number of games, um, which is obviously not good from his point of view. But as I said, I mean, we can only sort of take things on face value, and he has certainly understands that. You know, we he was out when he shouldn't have done, and got involved with something that he shouldn't have been involved in. Um, yeah, so look, going forward, I, I I can't see I can't see how that'll make a difference. Um, yeah, sorry, I've lost my train of thought there. Um, he, he will cer he will certainly uh, pull his weight, I think, from yeah you know, from now on going forward. Um, you know, I, I'm sure it's been a wake up call for him. He's been acquitted, you should remember, he's found not guilty, he's vindicated in a sense. But those images of what happened that night were out there for everybody to see. And has that, do you think, meant that regardless of the not guilty verdict, there has been damage done to the reputation of this sport and your team? Um, look, that's, that's for someone else, I suppose, to, to make that judgment. Um, look, there's always two sides to the story, and um, yeah, whether, whether everything was on on video or not, I, look, I, I just don't know. I wasn't there that night. Um, uh, you know, the decision's been made, and look, we're going to. You know, we, we can only we can only believe or go with that uh, with that decision that's been made. Okay, we're going to move on to cricketing matters. We can head to a test match now. Get some more questions. You think he needs to make some sort of public apology or show some sort of contrition in a statement? Or um, look, that'll that'll be up to Ben and his management team, I suppose. But certainly, when he when he came out to New Zealand um, after the Ashes tour that he missed, he certainly addressed uh, the players in the change room before you know, when he first arrived. Uh, so from from our point of view, um, you know the team, uh, you know certainly his contrition was evident you know, for the for the boys in the team. Would you agree with the same comment? Oh, look, I, certainly. Um, you know, it's, uh, I think it was important to actually um, apologise to the boys in the team um, because it, it put not just the boys in the team but a lot of people, management of the team and um, management in, at the ECB who had to go through a lot of, lot of extra um, uh, yeah, activities yeah, to, to uh, work our way through it. Um, look, I'm, I'm sure, I, I'm sure he'll, you know, something will, will be forthcoming.